Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. And this one, as the title suggests, I got a couple of NFL free agents that the New York Giants could target in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months, basically. Because uh, now that the offseason is officially here, we got to start thinking about who we could supplement this roster with. Especially given the fact that we are going to see some sort of roster overturn. Um, of course, it's been talked a lot. I'm sure any and every Giants fans already knows that uh, Joe Shane wants to clear around $40 million of cap space for the New York Giants. In order to do so, that means we're going to have to get rid of players. Even though it may mean making the team worse with getting rid of some of those players. In fact, just recently, he gave even more quotes on it saying that tough decisions are going to have to be made. That's not what I'm here to talk about with that video. I already had one basically dealing with that topic. I'll put it up in the right hand corner right now for you guys to go check out. Uh, what I am here to say, though, is that with that knowledge in mind, the free agents that we are going to target and sign are going to be guys that have to come on very cheap and very affordable contracts. I'm talking like at max, they're going to make six million dollars a year, which already cuts down not only just the general pool of guys we could try and sign but also for some positions you know the quality as well and and also with that being said of course this might not be the most exciting video for some fans out there because you might have names that you you've never heard before or you know you might have some player in mind that you want to sign for example last year a very popular name was Hassan Riddick he's a free agent once again we don't have the money this year to sign Hassan Riddick um and we'll see of course this is all just me of a Giants fan uh, kind of speculating and, and you know saying what agents you know what free agents I think we could target and what price bracket and whatnot maybe the Giants pull off some miracle you know once again like they did last year and we clear up so much cap space that we can sign big name guys but I just don't think that's what's gonna happen this year so with that being said let me get to the first guy and this is somebody that fits that first bill I was talking about I'm not sure if a lot of people are going to know him, Josie Jewell, a linebacker from the Denver Broncos. Now, of course, with Blake Martinez being a potential cap casualty and of and in general, our linebacking core needing some more depth and more players in it. We just need to get linebackers. Specifically, we need to get people that are good in coverage. We need a good off ball coverage linebacker. And Josie Jewell is somebody that could do that. He fits the bill to a T. Now, this is per PFF. But instead of me giving you my take on him, there's one of the few times where I'm just like, let me just read what they wrote on this, guys. And, and you guys will see what I'm talking about. The Broncos will probably like to retain at least one of two of their off-ball linebackers this offseason as they transition to a new coaching staff. Rookie third-rounder Baron Browning showed promise in particular to close out the season as he recorded a 75.3 average coverage grade over his final five games of the season which ranked eighth among off-ball linebackers. Coming off his first season as a full-time starter in 2020, Jewel posted an 83.5 grade through week two before losing the remaining of the season due to injury. Uh, Jewel earned a 65 or better grades in run and pass defense in 2020 on over 1,000 total snaps, played and generated 11 quarterback pressures as the occasional pass rusher. From week nine of 2020, through Jules' injury week two of this season, his 79.8 overall grade ranked fourth among off-ball linebackers and his 79.5 coverage grade ranked fifth. Jewel also provides the occasional pass rush snap and very rarely missed tackles. Complete package of a modern off-ball linebacker. And now this is why he would be so cheap. Because first of all, as a coverage linebacker, you're talking about at times that he graded as one of the best in the NFL, fourth overall. As an overall linebacker, his numbers posted seem to be one of, once again, one of the best top 10 overall in the linebacking class and just linebackers generally in the NFL. So why is he so cheap? Well, one, he's not that known of a guy playing for a team that hasn't really been winning that much. And these factors do matter. We see it in sports across, you know, the entire, you know, major league sports in, in North America, America in general. And two, he is coming off of a pectoral injury. Now, this is not one of those things like an ACL or something where it could really hinder the performance of a player. I'm not saying that this isn't, you know, an injury that didn't give him any problems or whatnot. But it's like way more recoverable and he could get back to the game that he was performing at in 2020 and 2021 
for sure way easier than compared to those but it is going to take time so because the injury maybe that brings down his value a little bit and also he hasn't been doing it for too long right we're talking about a recent emergence so this all just spells one type of contract for him that's going to be the one year prove a deal and that's essentially what i think the Giants should give him somewhere one year around four to five million dollars bring him in really good depth or potentially a really good starter for the giants next up we got a name that everybody does know it is casey hayward um formerly of the chargers right and but currently with the las vegas raiders and this is a name that man until i actually read up on the cornerback free agents this year i really thought he was gonna go for a bit more now he is a bit older he's a at this point one of those grizzled vets in the nfl and uh, i think he's like 31 or something but he just played for the raiders on a very cheap deal i think it was around four million dollars and he was very clearly their best cornerback in a raiders defense that was you know pretty good and a raiders defense that helped to take them to the playoffs casey hayward in my opinion was their main guy reason he even signed on such a, a cheap deal it was actually a 2.5 million dollar deal because i said 4 million because once again that's around where i think we should sign him but the reason he signed on a one year 2.5 million dollar deal with the raiders one of those quote unquote prove it deals is because of the fact that he had a really terrible year in los angeles of course there's a connection with gus bradley as well bradley was at one point over there in the chargers but what hayward did in 2021 was return to form with a 75 coverage grade being his fifth 75 plus marcus in his past six seasons and i will say he was playing in a cover zone and a cover three system specifically and that's what he thrives in but casey hilliard is a guy that at the prime of his career was one of the elite cornerbacks in the league i'm very sure that he could adapt to a man system and at least be an average corner for us not to mention he could bring some sort of veteran presence to the team and to a cornerback group that is very very young and will only get younger if or maybe even when james bradbury does end up leaving the giants or i guess we end up leaving him next up we got a wide receiver here a name that people do know it is byron pringle of the kansas city chiefs and of course without a doubt before i get into anything else i am hoping that our guy mike kafka could work some sort of strings behind the scene and get us a player that he's worked with before from kansas city and i should expect you know we should all expect to see guys from teams that our coaches worked with before coming over here it's just it's always happened to the nfl level of course as giants fans we saw it in 2018 heavily with james betcher uh, we even saw it in Joe Judge era with a uh, Patrick Graham and Blake Martinez is probably the biz biggest example and Dave Gelman, James Bradbury, right? So without a doubt, I think we're going to target some guys from the teams they've worked with before. Byron Pringle is just wide receiver depth through and through. Very solid, very fast receiver. A key rotational piece in Kansas City's offense from 2018 to now. So basically during their great run he worked his way up from a practice squad player i think he was undrafted as well to a special teamer to now that rotational piece we're talking about and he shows up in the playoffs as well when called upon in 2021 he had by far his best year he had 568 yards off of 42 receptions and five touchdowns he was a starting kick returner for kansas city as well with 25 returns for 620 y 21 yards and he played a lot of snaps played almost half of the chiefs offensive snaps in 2021 after not playing more than 27 in a single year i remember when i said he showed up in the playoffs well he actually technically is a kansas city uh record holder he is the fourth most postseason touchdowns in kansas city franchise history we have a wide receiving core that i've spoken about before where it's really just kenny galde Kadarius tony as two sure guys and even then our two sure guys have injury issues I would love to re-sign John Ross. I've been kind of banging on that drum for a while. We may or may not keep Slayton. Other than those, who is there, right? So why not go and get somebody that is definitely going to be on the cheap? I think he, you could get him on a one-year $3 million deal, maybe even another $4 million deal. That's basically what he's been signing with the Chiefs for four years now. He's not necessarily somebody that I could see getting a major payday as he is a third option for them. Come over here and he becomes our third or fourth option immediately. So it gives us a nice weapon in the special teams return game as well. When's the last time we had that? 
Next up for these last two are names that you've probably already seen if you watched the mini series I put out last week. The first one being Jimmy Smith, cornerback from the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, much like Byron Pringle, this is somebody, you know, with a coach in this time being Don Wink Martindale. He worked with the Ravens, bringing over a player that he's worked with before. Jimmy Smith is immediately a scheme fit. He's been a mainstay in Baltimore for years now. He's an older guy. A dude that went healthy has been a Pro Bowl caliber cornerback for the Ravens without question. Now, the Ravens, of course, have one of the best defenses in the NFL in general, along with one of the best secondaries. Smith is a part of that. I think the Giants can use him no matter what. I think he'll be great as a third option for us. And that's exactly where the Ravens have used him. He, because he's been behind Marcus Peters. He's been behind Marlon Humphrey. They're clear, you know, one and two over there. He could provide us with some sort of level of continuity, that being with the defense and experience as well as a vet back there in the secondary. He is going to be cheap, not just because of his age, not just because of where he's playing. Once again, that number three instead of number one, like previously in his career, but also because of injuries. And now this may scare some people away, but Jimmy Smith has had a really injury riddled career in the NFL. That just plays to us when it comes to contracts, but hopefully it does not play when it comes to the NFL season. And of course, the last guy here would be Ted Karras, the guard slash center from New England. I could see him coming on a $4 million deal around that. I spoke about him as well in the last videos. He's a guy that bounced around. He's been kind of a journeyman at the center position, the guard position. That's what he was for New England. He's been in New England multiple times with other teams as well. Very good starting, reliable starting guard for them that even shifted to center. He only allowed three sacks and two penalties on 829 snaps. I think that he's a good option to bring in here, whether or not we want to get him in here as a center or a guard. Uh, it's a plus. You could bring him in here as a guard to help out whoever we draft to beat at right tackle. You could bring him in here as a center if, we, you know, for some reason, Tyler Lindenbaum is in the pick. And, you know, you don't, you don't think or believe that Alec Lindstrom or one of those other guys following Linderbaum in the draft would be reliable enough to be your center he brings a lot of options but those are the five players I have in mind definitely like I was saying at the beginning of the video not the most exciting just because of what we're looking at the pool of players we're looking at as you can see I definitely leaned heavily towards the defensive side of the ball because that's where I think most of our cuts are gonna happen that's where I think most of our cap casualties are gonna come from and on the offensive side where we need a lot of help even before these cuts were happening you're gonna need help from guys that are a bit more i guess uh star worthy a bit more expensive than what we could probably afford going into the season but put your thoughts down below let me know what you think uh who is your favorite out of these five who did you not expect uh, and what is a underappreciated one that i should probably talk about more in streams or in a video but that's it for now and i'm out hey guys thanks for watching thank you for checking out my channel the hub here on giants youtube Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.